Well, it's time for me to insulate my garage door. As you can see, I've already started, got, I think, the hardest part done, the top row. Now I'll continue with the middle and the bottom. And as you can see, I'm doing it with the reflective side towards the garage door, facing out, of course. And the reason I elected to go with the reflective side towards the garage door facing out is because I live in Arizona and it gets warm in the summertime. I think the garage last summer hit 107 in here. So this will keep out the heat. I'm not worried about retaining the heat during the winter months because here it is March and it's 84 degrees already. So, the reflective side goes towards the metal or the garage door. It's a sample piece here. And in addition, so in addition to having the reflective side out, I'm going to have an air gap in here. Now my Space here is about an inch and three quarters. I opt for three quarter inch piece of insulation and then I'm going to frame it, so to speak, with additional pieces of three quarter inch insulation. on all four sides and then I'm going to put that on the frame and that'll give me a three-quarter inch air gap in here and when I go to install the full-size piece, I'm going to be taking off the support bars so it can slide up there. So, let's start with putting my frame around. And I'll show you how that's going to work. And the way I'm going to hold the frame of the insulation to the door is through some Elmer's spray adhesive. We'll let that get tacky there for a minute. So I just take that piece we just sprayed put it up there like so and then I just happen to have a piece of some kind of packing material and I use that as a wedge here holds it against the door until it just dries up. And I did experiment with that adhesive gluing a couple pieces together and had it wedged in the door for a couple, three weeks. And it's still held together. So we're going to go with that. Well, now I'll just put the rest of the pieces around the perimeter of this panel.
So I'm gonna take this side of this support bar off, just enough to get over in here. Insulation turns out to be pretty easy. And luckily, I've got a large table to work with. I brought this out from the dining room. Hopefully she doesn't notice it's missing before I can get it back there. And what I did first when I went and got these at Lowe's, I had to cut them down in the parking lot to be able to fit in the car. So I did it, just cut them down to a rough size. Oh, I figured out what would fit in my car. And we'll simply cut it in the lowest parking lot. Using a razor knife. Perfect. Mark at 31 and three quarters. And it's well worth the time to get one of these drywall T squares. I think they have them at Harbor Freight pretty cheap. It's well worth the effort and time for cutting these, for marking them and cutting them. And so with that, Just using a razor knife, if you will, and just we cut it. And I found it doesn't really matter which side you're cutting it on. And with that done, we just break it like that. Turn it over. And cut the rest of it. Definitely helps having a table up here versus doing it on the ground. I can take out the spacer now. You can see the heat did its job and it's holding up this frame. Now these top row ones, I found it was just easier to split the piece in half, put one half in and then the other one and then tape it with this uh, aluminum tape. So I'm probably gonna do the same down here, split this one in half. It's just so much easier to get in. So I'm going to cut that and be right back again. I also removed two bolts 
on the hinge here, on one side only. So that the uh, insulation can slip right down through and not get bound up by those the screws. And this stuff bends fairly easy. Now I just push it in this in the position. There's one. And we'll put the second half in. Just like that. Put some of this aluminum tape now on this seam. This stuff is very sticky. go and we'll reattach the bar well here's one more view of this frame that I have around the panel so that when I put the insulation on the door I'll have this air pocket of three quarters of an inch it's supposed to do the radiant barrier better and this is just stuck on with, like I said, the adhesive. Well, I'm down to one last panel to put insulation on. But I wanted to see a before and after here temperature. So here is the temperature, we'll call it 92 on the insulated panel. And on the one right below it, let me find here. One twenty nine, ninety four, and we'll call it one thirty. Look at that. So it does make a big difference, especially with the radiant heat. But check this out. I'm gonna go outside and check the temperature from out there on these same two panels. Now these same two panels Here's the panel that's not insulated. 
call it 140. And the panel that is insulated is 167. So it is radiating heat back out. Again, uninsulated. And the insulated panel. Interesting. Well, it's done. Insulated the garage door. And not a minute too soon. It's here, it's only the middle of April and it's hitting 100 degrees already today. A couple of takeaways though, if I may. One of them would be, this was my first piece I did. And as you can see, the letters kind of go vertically instead of horizontally. If I would have thought, I would have made it go the other way. And also on this, Talking about the letters, if I just gave it a little bit more thought, I could have had the letters all in a row here, like I did on the bottom row. It wouldn't have taken much more to get them all that way. Okay, no big deal at all, but it's done. And I'll tell you, one of the takeaways, cutting them in half, just so much easier to put on. And even some of them that I cut in half, I didn't even need the tape them. They fit together so well. And the tape almost goes with the uh, vertical posts anyhow. So the whole thing probably cost me $75, $70 for the the panels themselves, I used six. Now, check that. I've got, tw yeah, I've got 12 panels here, and it took six four by eight sheets of the foam insulation to do them. So I got two panels out of one four by eight sheet. Didn't affect at all. The operation of the door didn't need to adjust the springs like I say probably seventy dollars in the uh, foam insulation and I spent another six or eight dollars on the adhesive so all in all eighty dollars to do the garage door and these panels were so wide and tall that's why I elected to go with the foam insulation, the rigid foam insulation, and cut it to size. So you'll see a lot of opinions whether you should have the silver backing facing the metal door or facing into the garage. Again, my, my objective was to have, to keep the heat out. I don't need to keep the heat in during the winter. It doesn't get that, that cold. So I went with the silver side towards the garage door facing out with a, to make it that radiant barrier. I have that, like I said, I showed you, I have that small air gap between the door and the insulation. Well, thanks for watching. See you on my next project.